This is Dr. Emily Sherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Iowa. I love Iowa. This is my home. I've got people I care about all over the country, but it's got to be said, the solid majority of them are right here in Iowa. So I'm very emotionally involved in this state's forecast, but I'm going to do my best to stay objective, get you some good information in this video. Let's talk about how we expect Iowa to change as we move towards 2050. First, let me tell you about the winter, because I know when I talk with my friends in Iowa about the changes that are coming, plenty of people are perhaps more pleased than they should be about our increasingly mild winters. Let's take a look at those projections, give the people what they want. So here we're looking at the USDA plant hardiness zone map. Right now, this is based on historical data from 1980 to 2009, and it places most of our state pretty squarely in zone five. We can see some little peaks of zone six down towards the bottom and some zone four up towards the top of the state. If we look at mid-century under RCP 4.5, which represents a very modest doable reduction in emissions, we can see the pretty big warm up that's projected for our state. We see a big move of zone six territory, including into some major population centers. If we zoom in here, we see the ICR is moving towards zone six and so is Des Moines. And we see a loss of zone four up at the northern border. When we talk about change, change is always gonna be relative. It seems to me possible that although we will see warming, of course, kind of hidden on the map in this central third of the state, that for the big trees, other mature plants, they may experience slightly less stress in that more conserved central band. So what does that mean in terms of what the winters are gonna feel like? It'll still get cold enough to snow, but I would anticipate at least another couple of weeks of growing season by mid-century, maybe more like a minimum of three additional weeks of growing season towards the southern third of the state. And while there will still be snow, the snow cover won't be as consistent. If you're concerned about soil loss, it's going to be increasingly important to get a fall cover crop to protect the soil from winter winds. Plenty of people are going to see these milder, slightly shorter winter projections and feel a bit happy about that. But now we're going to talk about something I don't know anyone is going to like it. We're going to look at the summer projections. It is going to get hot in Iowa. Let me show you here over on the USDA map. So right now, Iowa enjoys uh, some pretty cool summers here in the Driftless area. If we look at the key, these show the number of days over 86 based on historical data from 1980 to 2009. So we see up here in the drift list, maybe a couple of weeks over 86, not a lot of time you would wanna put your air conditioning on. And then as we move into the Southern half of the state, it gets warmer and warmer. We're in Des Moines right now. We have maybe 60 days, maybe two months over 86. And in some places down here, say in the southwest corner, maybe three months over 86. Now let's look at mid-century under the reduced emission scenario. And we do see a big change, right? We see this color we didn't see in the state before. That represents up to 120 days a year over 86 degrees. So four month hot summer and a three month hot summer. And we do see that increased heat showing up in our highly populated areas. We do see it in Des Moines. We do see it in the southern half of the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. And we do see it over to the border here where we have um, a lot of people living in the Omaha area on both sides of the border. And that's a pretty big heat up. It will change our energy demands. And I think it's worth as we try not to let it get bigger than it is in our minds to look back at what the summers look like today, those milder summers today, and see where do we see that kind of peachy colored combo on the map today. And it's here in the border between Kansas and Nebraska. So if you want to get your thoughts um, in order about what Iowa summers will feel like as we move towards mid-century, it's not going to feel like a sheet of flames. It's going to feel like it feels now at the uh, Nebraska-Kansas border today. That's an area that's not so culturally different from ours. It's an area that's not so economically different from much of Iowa. It is a big change but it's not a change that has to scare us. It's a change for which we have to get ready. Now that's talking about the patterns in a typical summer. I do also wanna pass along an important warning. The federal government wants everyone in the Midwest to know we should anticipate serious heat waves by mid-century. 
by mid-century, one year in 10 in our area is projected to have a heat wave 13 degrees hotter than current highs. So that's a little mathematical. Let's talk about what that means for Iowa. We get typical summer highs in the high 80s now. It's not uncommon for us to have heat waves in the low hundreds. You see that every few years. Looking back at the historical record, Iowa has in 1936 had heat waves up to 111 degrees. It looks unfortunately like we can anticipate a future that does look a bit like the past, but on a more regular basis. We should anticipate at least every 10 years, a heat wave over 110 lasting five days. That's pretty nasty, right? Especially considering how humid our summers are. If you got a hot, humid heat wave over 110, you could be talking about potentially fatal heat. Heat that would kill healthy people, that could kill healthy livestock too. However, it's good to know we already have many of the tools we need to deal with extreme Midwestern heat. Tools like air conditioning, of course, and we have healthy community centers where people can go if their air goes out, places like libraries and houses of worship. And let's not forget the unsung hero of extreme heat emergencies, old school basements. You want a simple way to build your climate resilience in Iowa? If you have a basement, particularly an old fashioned basement, one that's well underground so it stays naturally cooler than the rest of the house, if you were to lose power, that's a place where you could be comfortable and safe in a heat emergency. A lot of us already prepare basement space for tornado season. In our family, we have a yearly ritual where we get the basement ready for a weather emergency. You might not have thought about using that same space for a heat emergency, but it's a good idea to keep in the back of your head. Let's talk about the impact of that heat, both regular and extreme changes on agriculture and on plant communities. As temperatures increase, plants are gonna face more of a demand for moisture. We're looking at maybe a 25% higher moisture demand from plants in 2050. That's a lot, we're gonna need more water. Traditionally, we farm with surface water here. We've had a much lower use of irrigation in Iowa than in our neighboring states. But over the past 10 years, there has been increased use of irrigation. Most of Iowa draws groundwater from the Jordan Aquifer. Right now, unfortunately, we're not drawing from it sustainably, and that's not from agricultural use. It's from our residential and commercial use. Many of our cities draw their water from that aquifer. But you know, when we talk about this unsustainable use pattern, I don't think many people know about it. I bet that most of us haven't thought about where our water comes from because the lived experience here is that water is so abundant. We have so much beautiful surface water. I don't think we think about depleting a resource when we water the lawn or when we water the garden. But as we build our state's resilience, we're gonna to need to start seeing water differently. We can learn from our neighbors to the West who have helped recover aquifers in some situations from much more serious losses. You should check out the video on New Mexico. Albuquerque knows how to get it done. As we learn how to work to conserve water more intensely, we will be able, I do think, to recharge aquifers and look towards sustainable use. The people of Iowa care about the future of their state. And as we learn more about this risk, I think that we'll be able to address it. Under the projected changes, water is our most serious resource to conserve because the biggest threat to our state is desertification. Many of you might not know this, but you know, Iowa actually has some pockets of pretty legit desert habitat. Up in the Lus Hills, you have your easternmost naturally occurring populations of prickly pear. The desert could bloom out of there. As we approach mid-century, the desert is going to try to grow. It's a threat to the entire state, but the threat is most pronounced in the western half, particularly in areas that already have more fragile sandy soils. These are big changes that we're talking about, big shifts. But you know, I can't be too afraid. Iowans, we're not only positive in the face of challenges, we're really tough. And we get the work done. We're already ahead of the ball on the energy transition. There's still work to do, but did you know we're already up to 40% of our energy coming from wind? And that's talking about energy in the state, not the wind energy we export. I, I'm so proud of our state's work with the energy transition. And there are communities here in Iowa that are even further along the path towards renewables. The Amana colonies, for example, they get most of their power from local biofuels and solar installation is way up too. We're building a clean energy infrastructure and we're building a resilient infrastructure. 
We got whacked really hard by that derecho in 2020, and we know there are more of them coming. There will be more straight line wind damage as the storms become more and more intense across the whole US. Diversifying and localizing our energy infrastructure is a big part of building up our resilience, as is our cultural willingness to help our neighbors when things get bad. In my area, after the 2020 derecho, we had no power for just over a week, which frankly seemed very fast, especially considering the miles and miles of power lines down in the area. That disaster, it gave us all a real chance to see the current level of resilience and preparedness here and the teamwork and the community support of which we're all capable. With the extreme storms that are coming, we do expect more intense rainfall in the future, and that means more flooding. I'd like to give a nod to Dubuque, Iowa. They're a national leader in riverfront design now. In response to the 2008 floods, they created new green systems to protect their city without the kind of flood walls that pass the buck downstream to neighbors who can't afford renovations. That's the kind of thinking we need in this country, thinking that includes the well-being of our neighbors. When I look towards the future of Iowa, try and sum it up, the best way I can describe it is that everything's gonna get more intense. The weather will become even more extreme. Bigger rains, longer droughts, higher heat waves. You know we're gonna get some of those polar vortexes, maybe some ice storms. It, it doesn't sound that unfamiliar, right? It sounds like home, just like more of it. The extreme conditions of Iowa have already shaped us as a culture. Our people, those of us who make Iowa our home, we all choose to be here. We choose to live in this place with its wild weather and its big extremes because we like it here. And as Iowa intensifies, I think that we will intensify too, that we'll become more resilient in our homes and in our communities, that we'll be able to dig into our values, our love of home, our love of our warm and neighborly way of life, our desire to feed the world. We've got strong communities, and I know that we can work together to get stronger. Does Iowa have the nicest climate outlook I've seen? <laughs> no way. But I think Iowa has the nicest resilience outlook. Iowa is tough in all the right ways to handle the changes that are coming. I'm so happy that I'll be here with all of us working to build a strong future for Iowa. And if you're listening to this and you're not an Iowan, but it sounds good, you're not afraid of the challenges, you're not afraid of the changes, you wanna work with a community and get ready, you come on over here, we got a lot of opportunities. It's not gonna be easy here in Iowa. It never has been what you would call easy, but the people here, we make it nice. And I believe that we'll continue to do so in the future. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe and help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming in this state more than many others. Let's get ready.